This is an image I saw when I was younger. Now what I think this image is trying to say or what others have been trying to say through this image or with this image is one of equality versus equity with equality being equal opportunity and equity being equal outcome. Or you could even say capitalism versus socialism, for example, where capitalism is where everyone is starting from the same position, so you have a fair beginning, and socialism being the redistribution of wealth, so you have a fair outcome or a fair ending. Now, when I was younger, when I first saw this image, I thought that the right side is the way that the world should be. I thought that this side was fair and the left side was unfair. But now, when this image popped up for me and I saw it again, now that I'm a bit older, I had a different perspective on it. I think the right side of the image is romantic and it's a warm image of the world, but I think it's actually an impossible image and disconnected from reality from the point of view of a political or economic system like capitalism or socialism. Now I'll explain why I think it's impossible to achieve the right side of the image through a political or economic system. In this image, success is defined as being able to see the baseball game. And in the real world, to be successful, you have to make good decisions and have talent and be skilled and invest your time wisely. And like the man in the blue shirt, if you do this, if you have these successful traits, you'll grow taller and you'll be able to see the baseball game as a reward of your hard work or your sacrifices. So these successful traits or actions will lead you to success and maybe that's what these boxes or these crates represent. They represent the hard work that you've put in or the sacrifices that you've made or your successful actions. In the real world, you can't actually take someone's talents or skills or what they invested their time in and give it to someone else, like to this person in the purple. So in other words, you can't take someone's skills and give it to someone else so that they can grow, so that they're suddenly a taller height or able to do something that they couldn't before. So then maybe these boxes represent something else, like the outcome of those skills or your time investments for example, money or wealth. So then if these boxes represent money or wealth, then yes, the person in purple can have a taste of success and they can see the baseball game. But I think that this is only a short-term solution. This is because money and wealth is consumed over time. And if it isn't earned or built up again through your successful actions or traits or skills or investments, then eventually you'll just end up in the same position that you were in before you'll be unable to see the game. So then the system will need to continuously take the taller person's boxes away from him or the rewards of his actions and give it to the shorter person. If this is the case, then the shorter person has no incentive to grow anymore. There's no reason to try to grow. And also the taller person would have no reason to continuously produce these boxes or create extra wealth or money since it's just going to get taken away from him anyway and given to someone else who isn't even trying to grow themselves or produce their own boxes. Now, of course, there are some people who aren't able to grow taller or succeed or see that baseball game, no matter what they do or no matter how hard they work. There are just some people who are born less fortunate in that way. Now, of course, those people need a helping hand, but I don't think that helping hand should come from a political system or a economic system. Instead, I think it should come from the culture. But I'll expand on this point a little bit later in the video. Now in a situation like this where someone isn't able to see the baseball game at the current moment, you might say that the taller person should be altruistic, meaning that they should sacrifice for the good of other people because it's the right thing to do. And I agree that being altruistic is the right thing to do more often than not. But if I'm looking at this from the perspective of a political or economic system, I don't think it's reasonable to rely on someone's altruism. For example, in such a system, what would happen if the taller person refuses to be altruistic? The system would punish him with force. So imagine if you were in this taller person's shoes 
and you were forced by your system to continuously donate anything that you make over $1,000 per month to a random charity, what would you do? Would you be motivated to keep making $2,000 per month like you currently are? Or would you only work as required to make $1,000 a month or just slightly above that? Maybe you'll keep making $2,000 per month for a bit, but I think that eventually most people would not produce as many boxes as they can or the maximum output in this sort of situation. Because I don't think altruism is natural for humans. That's why it's considered a sacrifice. If it was something that we naturally did, it wouldn't be a sacrifice. That's why I eat with my own hands. I don't expect someone else's hands to feed me. So then, if the overall height of the boxes reduce over time in a situation like this because the taller person isn't incentivized to create maximum output, then the outcome would eventually become unfair again. So then what can the system do? The system itself can't produce extra boxes and it can't force people to grow upwards. So the only thing that it can do is force people to be cut down. If it cuts the taller people down, the outcome would be equal again. This is why societies of the past that aimed for equal outcomes ended up with the worst qualities of life and lots of death. It's because the only way a system can ensure equal outcome is to suppress a person's extra success since the system cannot force someone to be successful. So I think that a system needs to be more like a computer, cold and efficient and does the same thing for everyone. So everyone getting the same computer that's cold and efficient as possible, and then what they do with that computer is up to them. I think that's fair. I think that the image on the left portrays this, the machine or system running efficiently and fairly. However, this was all from the viewpoint of a political or economic perspective, where it's impossible to force someone to be consistently altruistic. But from a cultural perspective, I think that consistent altruism is possible. In culture, altruism is optional, but there are countless examples of consistent altruism. For example, charitable organizations or, or even someone just buying someone else lunch or something like that. It's even been said that families are a little bit like a communist society where a parent tries to make sure everything is handed out equally among the children. But a family is not a political or economic system. It's a culture. The children aren't forced to share with a gun to their head, or shouldn't be anyway. And they can stop sharing once they are old enough to make their own decisions, if they want. So if I look at this image again from a cultural perspective, it once again becomes romantic and a warm imagination of this world, but possible. Unlike the impossible image that I saw from the perspective of a political or economic system. So I think that maybe the fairest world that we can have is where the left image is an image of our political or economic system and the right image is an image of our culture. <laughs>